Good afternoon. As we celebrate the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time, let's all stand and join in singing our gathering song. Number 734, Bring Forth the Kingdom. Number 734. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Lord Jesus. 
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is set shaken, the husk appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks. For it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your loving mercy in the morning and your truth in the watches of the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. Still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is upright. In him, my rock, there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this, which is more, mortal, clothes itself with immortality. Then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Shine like lights in the world. 
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit, for every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good, but an evil person, out of a store of evil, produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, if any of you are like me, you absolutely cannot wait for spring. There are many things about spring, but aside from the longer days with sun and warm temperatures, I think one of the most personally satisfying aspects of the season is the blooming of the trees and the flowers. Finally, after months of remaining dormant, spring comes around and the earth once again produces new life. Much like the newness of life that brings fruit to springtime blossoms, our readings today speak of life that brings good fruit, pointing out the obvious that good fruit does in fact come from good trees. Our Lord goes on to say in the gospel that a good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of the store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Picking up where he left off last week, Jesus continues his exhortation on the Christian life to his disciples, those who will follow him then and those who will follow him now in our own time. Taking to heart our Lord's instruction, we as followers of Jesus, I think are left with two questions to consider today. First, what is the good fruit that I am called to produce as a disciple of Jesus? And secondly, how do I make sure my life is producing good fruit? Jesus tells us, when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. As faithful followers of Jesus, we must look to the fruits of his own life to determine the fruits that should be evident in our lives. As the exemplar of all the virtues, Christ himself reveals to us the virtuous life to which we are all called, and which can ultimately be summed up, I think, through the virtue of charity, the virtue of love. The virtue of charity is known as the form of the virtues. It binds everything together in perfect harmony and raises our natural love to that of a supernatural divine love. In other words, the virtue of charity is kind of like the superglue of the interior life, of the life of virtue, that which holds it together. This virtue allows us then to love God above all else and to love our neighbor as ourselves, thus following Jesus who loves perfectly even to the cross. We are able to remove the proverbial plank from our eye and see our brothers and sisters for who they truly are. It is his beloved sons and daughters of the Father. Much like gardening requires time and care for the soil, the growth of our spiritual fruit requires time and care for our soul. St. Paul, writing of the ultimate effect of following our Lord, which is the hope of the resurrection, he writes, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord 
knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So how do we ensure that our own life produces good fruit? We labor in the vineyard of the Lord. We labor in the vineyard of the Lord, seeking to love and follow the one who first loved us. We we'll turn your attention to the Gospel of John. We hear Jesus say, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing, the Lord says. In other words, in order to bring fruitfulness to our lives, to be effective witnesses to the gospel, we must always stay connected to Jesus as branches to a vine. The frequent reception of the Sacrament of Reconciliation, faithful reception of the Holy Eucharist, a daily prayer life, and time spent in adoration of our Lord, all allow us to stay a fruitful branch on the divine vine that is Christ Jesus. I love this quote by Christian author Francis Chan. He wrote, there are periods that we forget in the pursuit of fruit that if we just abide in him, that is in Christ, then fruitfulness is a guarantee. In these coming days, as we prepare to enter into Lent, provides an opportunity for us. So let us fervently beg the Lord to purify our hearts so that we may abide in him and laboring ceaselessly for the Lord, we may produce good fruit that lasts for all eternity. And together let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence and trust in our Heavenly Father, we bring to him our needs, the needs of the church and of the whole world. For the church, May God's grace empower us in our efforts to share the gospel message. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence in Ukraine, may God's peace and spirit of reconciliation prevail. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our military police and firefighters, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect and elect and candidates seeking to join the Catholic community of faith, that trusting in the truth of Christ, they may find freedom of mind and heart, 
and preserve it always. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, may they be with Christ in paradise. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the soul of Jim Turner, whose funeral mass will be Tuesday, March 1st at 10 a.m. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the living and deceased members of St. Teresa and St. William, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And if you would join in praying our prayer for vocations found on the inside back cover of the Blue Hymnal. Almighty Father, you have created us for some definite purpose. Grant us the grace to know the path you have planned for us in this life and to respond with a generous yes. Make our archdiocese, parishes, homes, and hearts fruitful ground for your gift of vocations. May our young people respond to your call with courage and zeal. Stir among our men a desire and the strength to be good and holy priests. Bless us with consecrated religious and those called to a chaste single life, permanent deacons, and faithful husbands and wives or a sign of Christ's love for his church. We commend our prayer of vocations to you, Father, through the intercession of Mary, our mother, in the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number 751, the servant song. Number 751. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name, and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. 
that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Teresa of Avila, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your home. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Number 760, Christ has no body now but yours. Number 760. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours, here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion, no hands but yours to heal the wounded world. No hands but yours to soothe all its suffering. No touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. No eyes but yours to see as Christ would see, to find the lost, to gaze with compassion. No eyes but yours to glimpse the holy joy of the city. Of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. No feet but yours to journey with the poor, to walk this world with mercy and justice. Yours are the steps to build a lasting peace for the children of God. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. Through every gift give back to those in need. As Christ has blessed, so now be his blessing. With every gift, a benediction be to the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. The topic for this Thursday's RCIA class is Morality, Introduction, and Resources in Heaven, Hell, and Purgatory. All are welcome to attend. Join us this Monday for Mass at St. William for the conclusion of the Winter Faith Formation. The Girl Scouts are in the vestibule selling their famous cookies. Please stop by and show them your support. This Wednesday begins our Lenten journey with Ash Wednesday. Please take a bulletin for Mass times and fasting and abstinence information. Also, there are Lenten prayer guides at the church doors for you to use as reflections during Lent. This has been created by Deacon Dave. Please take one. The March Lecture and a Eucharistic Minister schedule is ready to be picked up at the side altar. And in celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, we are selling the book Treasures of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Books are available in the vestibule after all Masses this weekend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Number 635, let all things now living. Number 635. <laughs>